Hi, my name is Lindsay Belker and I have the privilege of serving at First and Christ Church United Methodist, both in Santa Rosa, California. It's a joy to have you with us in worship today. Today we celebrate the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the day that we remember that God has gifted us with the Holy Spirit, that we would know that we are not alone, that God is with us all the time and everywhere. As we enter into this time of worship this morning, I invite you to become aware of God's presence with you. I invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable, to join with me in a time of prayer. Creator God, Holy One, Living Spirit, Divine Presence among us, we ask you to still our minds, to open our hearts, to draw us in, to make us more aware of how you are moving among us. We ask you to bless this time of worship, that we would leave this time as changed people, held by your spirit, that we would go out in your love and serve in your name. In the way of Jesus we pray. Amen.
On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen! Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Robin Brown, and I'm a member of Christ Methodist Church. I'm so happy to be here with you this morning, even though we are here under sort of unusual circumstances. I brought something with me today. What do you notice? There's balloons, absolutely. What do we usually think of when we see balloons? Don't we use those for a celebration, maybe a graduation, or a birthday, or some sort of festive occasion? Well, today we are celebrating a birthday. We're celebrating the birthday of the church. But I have another balloon here. Look at this one. What do you notice about this balloon? It doesn't have any air in it, does it? It looks kind of sad, empty, even deflated. It wouldn't be much fun to play with. I really couldn't do much with this balloon. It's not very festive when it's like this. But what if I do this? Now what do you notice about the balloon? It's filled up, isn't it? It's filled up with air. And when it's filled up, we can do a lot more with it, can't we? It's a lot more fun to play with. It's a lot more festive. I can bounce it up and down, or I can bounce it to a friend. Well, about 2,000 years ago, the disciples of Jesus felt pretty much the same way as this sad balloon. Jesus had left them, and the disciples were feeling pretty sad and lonely, maybe a little afraid. They were definitely feeling empty and deflated. But Jesus promised that he would send them a comforter. The comforter was the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, it filled them up also, the way we filled up our balloon. It filled them up with the air of God, with the Spirit of God. And so once they were filled up, they were no longer feeling empty, they were feeling 
full. They were full of the Holy Spirit. They had the peace of, and love of God inside of them. They weren't lonely and afraid anymore. In fact, they felt empowered. They were empowered to go out and talk to people about Jesus. And that day they did. And just like with the disciples, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives also and fills us up so that we don't have to be sad or lonely or feeling empty. We feel the breath of God inside of us, which is the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing us the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that gives us your peace, your love, your hope, and your joy. Amen. When I lived abroad, I so desperately missed hearing my own language, not English. I, I lived in the Philippines, which was a U.S. colony, which still hosts thousands of U.S. troops. Plenty of people could speak English. I missed Pittsburgh English. I missed the charming way that people from Western Pennsylvania pronounce a long A and drop the infinitive. I missed the way that my family speaks English, the way that my family says my name. I missed all the comforts of home, my mom's chocolate chip cookies, my grandmother's halushki. I missed all of the things that reminded me of what it was for us to be gathered in one place as a family together. When the day of Pentecost came, they were gathered together in one place. Let's just stop there. Let's just stop there and admit that we miss being gathered together. I miss being gathered with you. I miss seeing all your faces in a great multitude rather than on a screen. I miss the way your children and your grandchildren are like miniature rushes of violent wind zooming around the sanctuary after worship. I miss the way we make each other laugh. 
I miss the cups of coffee I don't have to make. I miss all of the ways in which we gather as a community. The early Christians, the first Christians, would have had their own ways of gathering. They may have been together on Pentecost for worship. Worship certainly would have included food. Perhaps it was a special celebration. Maybe it was a wedding or a memorial. Maybe they were just together because they lived in a fearful time and they wanted all the comforts of what it meant to be a close-knit community together. God, it seemed, had other plans for them on that Pentecost. God, it seemed, wanted to do a new thing in the midst of that gathering of a comfortable and close-knit people. There was a loud wind. There were tongues of fire. And then the third miraculous happening. Suddenly, they were all able to speak. They were all able to be speak as to be understood by the crowd that had rushed to see what was going on. Every person in that crowd that had gathered could hear them proclaiming of God's good news in their own language. Two things stand out to me about this miracle of Pentecost. First, we see how God sort of laughs as we make plans for what will happen in our community. We often talk about Pentecost being the church's birthday, but like on any birthday, the celebration is not for the people who are already there, but for the one who is about to arrive. I remember my nephew's birthday. It seemed as though my concerns about my sister-in-law or my brother suddenly evaporated. All we wanted to hear about, all we wanted to celebrate, was this new being who had just arrived. Similarly, on Pentecost, the church's birthday, the ones who are really to be celebrated are not the believers who can suddenly proclaim God's language in new ways, but the people who are drawn to the wind, the people who are drawn in to the story, the people who are about to become the new Christians. On Pentecost, we learn that God's idea for the church is not simply for the pre-existing believers to, to gather together and to feel comfortable with themselves. Rather, the church is meant to reach out, to reach out to whoever it is who has ears to listen. The second thing that I think is worth mentioning about these miracles is that the believers in proclaiming the good news are able to meet this crowd exactly where they are. Uh, Professor Miguel de la Torre reminds us that the miracle of language in Pentecost is not suddenly that the, the crowd can understand Galilean, it's that the Galileans can speak in the foreign languages of the crowd the miracle of Pentecost is not an assimilation to a dominant culture. Rather, it is a celebration of diversity. These new people coming in this crowd are not required to profess a particular creed. They are not required to know a particular language to be part of the church. Rather, God is saying this church will be in many language, in every language, that it could reach people right where they are in the words that they best can hear in the tongue that their own mothers taught them. 
In this Pentecost miracle, we learn about who God is and who God wants the church to be. Because of these new believers rushing, coming forward in this crowd, the old believers, the first Christians, learn something new about who God is. Beloved, we may not be gathered together in one place on this Pentecost. We may not be all decked out in red together, waving yellow and orange streamers. We may not be eating a slice of sheet cake from Costco that says Happy Birthday Church on it. But we are in a greater place to understand the message of Pentecost than on any other Pentecost I have witnessed. Because by breaking out of our old way of doing things, whether we wanted to or not, we have the opportunity to share the good news to new people. The word new is right in good news that means God wants us to see the new thing that God is doing and share it with new people in a new way every day that we are the church, every day of our lives. In this time of COVID-19, I'm finding that I am having the opportunity to share new good news with new people all of the time. For so long, I never seemed to have time to talk to my neighbors. I was always rushing off to one meeting or another. Now I see them over one fence or the other fence or the other fence. Now we stop and say hello. Now we speak to each other with a greater intimacy, an intimacy unknown to us before. I can't imagine that my experience is unique. I wonder if, like me, when you make eye contact with someone, even when your face is covered, you see them differently, perhaps more clearly than you ever did before. The other part of Pentecost that I feel like I understand more fully now is that I hear, I hear language in a new way. I hear the phrase, how are you, differently. Somehow now, when someone asks me, how are you, I'm no longer inclined to give the quick and polite answer. Often when someone asks me that question, I find that we both laugh. How are any of us? How is the world? What day is it? How well, the world has changed. When someone says to me now, I'll call you, I find that they usually mean it. When I say to someone now, God loves you, I love you, those old words take on a different urgency, a new meaning, the phrase I have spoken so many times, God is with us, means something completely different to me now. God is with us. Christ, Christ unites us. Christ connects us to each other in spirit and in truth. I never knew. I never knew what those words truly meant until we were not together in body anymore. This Pentecost, during this new and weird and strange way of being, these old words might as well be a new language. And in this new language that we are speaking, I hear that God is calling us to be a new and different church, a church that may still long to be gathered together, but is not afraid of speaking God's love 
to strangers who come rushing forward. A church that may miss our old ways of being, but now has evidence that we can do something new and can still experience the Holy Spirit with us. When this day of Pentecost came, we were not gathered in one place, but the Spirit rested upon us anyway. And we spoke in new ways to new people, proclaiming God's love for each of them, trusting that through, in, and among us, God as is at work today as much as ever. Amen. As a green bud in the springtime is a sign of life renewed, so may we be signs of oneness mid earth's peoples many hued. As a rainbow lights the heavens when a storm The Holy Spirit is as close to us as our own breath. In the biblical languages, the words for spirit also mean breath. As we prepare for prayer today, I invite you to put your feet grounded on the floor straighten up your back, sit up straight, and take a deep breath. And another one. And as you inhale, inhale the breath, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as you exhale, breathe out those impurities, the worries, the anxieties that haunt you. Let us keep breathing as we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We are grateful for your abiding presence with us, stirring us to faith and good works, calling us out of complacency into action. We give thanks for your church, which encourages us to grow in relationship with you and with one another. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Like the creative winds of long ago, stir up in us imagination to live our faith boldly in this day and this time. Inspire the body of Christ to remain connected and to expand our outreach with innovation. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Like a gentle breeze, Soothe wounded souls and grieving hearts. Losses continue to mount and differences divide. Where there is brokenness, speak your peace. Where harm has been done, lead us to reconciliation. Where there is indifference, plant your love. Come, Holy Spirit, come. With fresh energy, renew the bodies, minds, and spirits of those who are weary. Refresh those who work in hospitals, clinics, health care centers, grocery stores, restaurants, Renew those who work in the fields as farm workers, utility workers, truck drivers, providing things we need. Come, Holy Spirit, come alongside those who have lost employment and food security. Walk with them into this uncertain future, guiding them to new opportunities. Come, Holy Spirit, 
come as a soft whisper of encouragement to those who cope with health conditions. In silence, we name before you those whom we know and love, who seek the healing touch of Christ. Share their pain, receive their frustration, and offer your healing touch of grace. Come, Holy Spirit, with your guiding wisdom, imparting knowledge upon local, county, state, national, and international leaders as they guide us through these days of crisis. We give thanks for scientists and health professionals who offer a reservoir of knowledge to lead us through these days. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Work within our lives that we might be faithful followers of Christ. We lift our prayer in the name and in the way of Christ together praying as he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It has been a joy to worship with you on this Pentecost Sunday. Today, First Church is having a Pentecost party for all at 10 o'clock via Zoom. We invite you to attend. Both Christ Church and First Church have prayer times with their pastors, either on Sunday or during the week, and your participation is welcome. On Sunday, June 7th, in addition to our recorded worship experience, we will have opportunity for Holy Communion via Zoom with members of our communities of faith. We invite you to check out our websites, our Facebook pages, for more information about how to connect in these ways as well as others. My friends in Christ, on this Pentecost Sunday, May you receive a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God, reviving your spirits, empowering you for the living of these days. May the love of God enfold you, the compassion of Christ carry you and your burdens. And may the Holy Spirit empower you with joy, with faith, with hope, this day and always. Amen. This is the Holy Spirit.